Hey everyone, we're going to gather at the back of the, of the church here, so I'd like you to take your booklet and your candle, and try not to trip over one another, come on back. Well, grace and peace to you, brothers and sisters, on this uh, great vigil of Easter. Um, not, we won't say too much because the service will, will take care of itself, but I just want to welcome uh, Bishop Dan. So great to have you here uh, for this great occasion. And uh, Rob Collis from St. Peter's Fireside. Thanks for joining us. I notice there's some St. Peter's folks here, uh, so you're very, very welcome. <laughs> Uh, of course, Owen is being baptized tonight, so we especially want to uh, welcome Owen's folks. Uh, you're, you're very welcome here. Thanks for joining us. Um, and everyone else who's here, who's not usually here, you're very welcome. <laughs> very, very welcome. Okay. Peter, you're on. Dear friends in Christ, on this most holy night, in which our Lord Jesus passed over from death to life, the Church invites her members dispersed throughout the world to gather in vigil and prayer, for this is the Passover of the Lord, in which by hearing his word and celebrating his sacraments, we share in his victory over death. Eternal God, who made this most holy night to shine with the brightness of your one true light. Sanctify this new fire, we pray. And so set us aflame with the fire of your love, that with pure hearts and kindled affections, we may attain to the radiance of your heavenly glory through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Christ yesterday and today, the beginning and the end, the Alpha and Omega. All time belongs to him, and all ages to him be glory and power through every age 
forever and ever. Amen. Amen. May the light of Christ rising in glory banish all darkness from our hearts and minds. The light of Christ. Thanks be to God. God. The light of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Get all to stand for the exalted. Rejoice now, heavenly hosts and choirs of angels, and let your trumpets shout salvation for the victory of our mighty King. Rejoice and sing now, all the round earth, bright with a glorious splendor, for darkness has been vanquished by our eternal King. 
Rejoice and be glad now, Mother Church, and let your holy courts in radiant light resound with the praises of your people. All you who stand near this marvelous and holy flame, pray with me to God the Almighty for the grace to sing the worthy praise of this great light. Through Jesus Christ, his Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with him in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly right and good, always and everywhere, with our whole heart and mind and voice to praise you, the invisible, almighty, and eternal God, and your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who paid for us the debt of Adam's sin. And by his blood delivered your faithful people. For he is the true paschal lamb, the very lamb of God, whose blood marks the doorposts of believers and makes us holy. This is the night when you brought our, our forebears, the children of Israel, out of bondage in Egypt and led them through the Red Sea on dry land. This is the night when with a pillar of fire you banished the darkness of our iniquity. This is the night when all who believe in Christ are delivered from the gloom of sin and are restored to grace and holiness of life. This is the night when Christ broke the bonds of death and hell and rose victorious from the grave. Our birth would have been no gain had we not been redeemed. How wonderful and beyond our knowing, O God, is your mercy and loving kindness to us that to redeem a slave you gave a son. O oh, wonderful providence of Adam's sin, destroyed completely by the death of Christ. O oh, happy fault, which gained for us so great and glorious a Redeemer. This is the night of which it is written, the night shall be as bright as the day. How holy is this night when wickedness is put to flight and sin is washed away. It restores innocence to the fallen and joy to those who mourn. It casts out pride and hatred and brings peace and concord. How blessed is this night when earth and heaven are joined and man is reconciled to God. Therefore, O Holy Father, accept our evening sacrifice, the offering of this candle in your honor, the work of bees and of your servants' hands, the gift of your most holy church. May it mingle with the light of heaven and shine continually to drive away all darkness. May Christ, the morning star who knows no setting, Find it ever burning. He who gives his light to all creation and who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let us now hear the record of God's saving deeds in history, remembering how he saved his people in ages past and in the fullness of time sent his Son to be our Redeemer. And let us pray that God may bring to completion in each of us the saving work he has begun. I invite you to be seated for the service of lessons. A reading from the book of Genesis. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was over the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And God saw the light was good. And God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. And God said, Let there be an expanse in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. And God made the expanse, and separated the waters that were under the expanse from the waters that were above the expanse. And it was so, and God called the expanse heaven, and there was evening, and there was morning, the second day. 
And God said, Let the waters under the heavens be gathered together into one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth, and the waters that were gathered together he called seas. And God saw that it was good. And God said, Let the earth sprout vegetation, plants yielding seed, and fruit trees bearing fruit in which is their seed, each according to its kind on the earth. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed according to their own kinds, and trees bearing fruit in which is their seed, each according to its kind. And God saw that it was good, and there was evening and there was morning the third day. And God said, Let there be lights in the expanse of the heavens to separate the day from the night, and let them be for, a, for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And let there be lights in the expanse of the heavens to give light upon the earth. And it was so. And God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night and the stars. And God set them in the expanse of the heavens to give light on the earth to rule over the day and over the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the fourth day. And God said, Let the waters swarm with swarms of living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth across the expanse of the heavens. So God created the great sea creatures, and every, every living creature that moves, with which the waters swarm according to their kinds, and every winged bird according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. And God blessed them, saying, Breathe, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the waters in the seas, and let the birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening, and there was morning, the fifth day. And God said, let the earth bring forth living creatures according to their kinds, livestock and creeping things and beasts of the earth according to their kinds. And it was so. And God made the beasts of the earth according to their kinds and the livestock according to their kinds and everything that creeps on the ground according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the heavens, and over the livestock, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. And God created man in his own image. In the image of God he created them, male and female he created them. And God blessed the earth, and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the heavens and over every living thing that moves on the earth. And God said, Behold, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is on the face of the earth, and every tree with seed in its fruit. You shall have them for food, and to every beast of the earth, and to every bird of the heavens, and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. And there was evening, and then there was morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all of the host of them. And on the seventh day, God finished his work that he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work that he had done. And so God blessed the seventh day and made it holy, because on it God rested from all of his work that he had done in creation. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Psalm 104 you'll find in your booklet, which we'll sing 
responsibly. <laughs> you clothe yourself with light as with a garment, and spread out the heavens like a curtain. Together? You, you, you clothe yourself with light as with a garment, and spread out exceedingly glorious. You are clothed with majesty and honor. You clothe yourself with light as with a garment, and spread out the heavens like a curtain. You lay the beams of your chambers in the waters, and make the clouds your chariot, and walk upon the wings of the wind. You clothe yourself with light as with a garment, and spread out the heavens like a curtain. You make winds your messengers, and flames of fire your ministers. You lay the foundations of the earth, that it never should move at any time. You cover it with the deep as with a garment. The waters stand above the hills. You clothe yourself with light as with a garment, and spread out the heavens like a curtain. At your rebuke they fled. At the voice of your thunder they hastened away. They went up as high as the hills, and down to the valleys beneath, even to the place you had appointed for them. You have set bounds for them which they shall not pass, neither shall they again cover the earth. You clothe yourself with light as with a garment, and spread out the heavens like a curtain. Send the springs into the rivers, which run among the hills. All beasts of the field drink thereof, and the wild donkeys quench their thirst. Beside them shall the birds of the air have their habitation, and sing among the branches. You water the hills from above. The earth is filled with the fruit of your works. You clothe yourself with light as with a garment, and spread out the heavens like a curtain. Let us pray. O God, who wonderfully created and yet more wonderfully restored the dignity of human nature. Grant that we may share the divine life of him who humbled himself to share our humanity, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> A reading from the book of Exodus. When Pharaoh drew near, the people of Israel lifted up their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians were marching after them, and they feared greatly. And the people of Israel cried out to the Lord. They said to Moses, Is it because there are no graves in Egypt that you have taken us away to die in the wilderness? What have you done to us in bringing us out of Egypt? Is not this what we said to you in Egypt? Leave us alone, that we may serve the Egyptians. For it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the wilderness. And Moses said to the people, Fear not, stand firm, and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will work for you today. For the Egyptians, whom you see today, you shall never see again. The Lord will fight for you, and you have only to be silent. The Lord said to Moses, 
Why do you cry to me? Tell the people of Israel to go forward. Lift up your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it, that the people of Israel may go through the sea on dry ground. And I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians so that they shall go in after them, and I will get glory over Pharaoh and all his host, his chariots, and his horsemen. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord, whom I have gotten glory over Pharaoh, his chariots, and his horsemen. Then the angel of God, who was going before the host of Israel, moved and went behind them. And the pillar of cloud moved from before them and stood behind them, coming between the host of Egypt and the host of Israel. And there was the cloud and the darkness, and it lit up the night without one coming near the other all night. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord drove the sea back by a strong east wind all night and made the sea dry land, and the waters were divided. And the people of Israel went into the midst of the sea on dry ground, the waters being a wall to them on their right hand and on their left. And the Egyptians pursued and went in after them into the midst of the sea, all Pharaoh's horses, his chariots, and his horsemen. And in the morning watch, the Lord in the pillar of fire and of cloud looked down on the Egyptian forces and threw the Egyptian forces into a panic, clogging their chariot wheels so that they drove heavily. And the Egyptians said, let us flee from before Israel, for the Lord, for the Lord fights for them against the Egyptians. Then the Lord said to Moses, stretch out your hand over the sea that the water may come back upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots, and upon their horsemen. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea and the sea returned to its normal course when the morning appeared. And as the Egyptians fled into it, the Lord threw the Egyptians into the midst of the sea. The waters returned and covered the chariots and the horsemen of all the host of Pharaoh that had followed them into the sea. Not one of them remained. But the people of Israel walked on dry ground through the sea, the waters being a wall to them on their right hand and on their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel from day, from that day from the hand of the Egyptians, and Israel saw the Egyptians dead on the seashore. Israel saw the great power that the Lord used against the Egyptians. So the people feared the Lord and they believed in the Lord and in his servant Moses. And then Moses and the people of Israel sang this song to the Lord saying, I will sing to the Lord for he has triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider he has thrown into the sea. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you, God. The Song of Moses. The Lord is my strength and my refuge. The Lord has become my savior. The Lord is my strength and my refuge. The Lord has become my Savior. I will sing to the Lord, for he is lofty and uplifted. The horse and its rider he has hurled into the sea. The Lord is my strength and my refuge. The Lord has become my Savior. This is my God, and I will praise him the God of my people, and I will exalt him. The Lord is a mighty warrior. The Lord is his name. The Lord is my strength and my refuge. The Lord has become my savior. The chariots of Pharaoh and his army has he hurled into the sea. The fire 
mightest of those who bear armor hath been drowned in the Red Sea. The fathomless deep has overwhelmed them. They sank into the depths like a stone. Your right hand, O Lord, is glorious in might. Your right hand, O Lord, has overthrown the enemy. Who can be compared with you, O Lord, among the gods? Who is like you, glorious in holiness, awesome in renown, and worker of wonders? The Lord is my strength and my refuge. The Lord has become my Savior. You stretch forth your right hand, the earth swallowed them up. With your constant love you led the people you redeemed. You brought them to safety in your holy dwelling. You will bring them in and plant them on the mount of your possession. The resting place you have made for yourself, O Lord. The sanctuary, O Lord, that your hand has established. The Lord shall reign forever and forever. The Lord is my strength and my refuge. The Lord has become my Savior. Let us pray. O God, whose wonderful deeds of old shine forth even to our own day, by the power of your mighty arm, you once delivered your chosen people from slavery under Pharaoh to be a sign for us of the salvation offered to all nations by the water of baptism. Grant that all the peoples of the earth may be numbered among the offspring of Abraham, and rejoice in the inheritance of Israel, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. In that day the branch of the Lord shall be beautiful and glorious, and the fruit of the land shall be the pride and honor of the survivors of Israel. And he who is left in Zion and remains in Jerusalem will be called holy, everyone who has been recorded for life in Jerusalem, when the Lord shall have washed away the filth of the daughters of Zion and cleansed the bloodstains of Jerusalem from its midst by a spirit of judgment and by a spirit of burning. Then the Lord will create over the whole site of Mount Zion and over her assemblies a cloud by day and smoke and the shining of a flaming fire by night. For over all the glory there will be a canopy. There will be a booth for shade by day from the heat and for a refuge and a shelter from the storm and rain. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks. Psalm 122. I was glad when they said unto me, We will go into the house of the Lord. I was glad when they said unto me, we will go into the house of the Lord. I was glad when they said unto me, We will go into the house of the Lord. Now our feet are standing Within your gates, O Jerusalem. Jerusalem is built as a city that is at unity in itself. I was glad when they said unto me, 
O God, you led your ancient people by a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. Grant that we, who serve you now on earth, may come to the joy of that heavenly Jerusalem, where all tears are wiped away, and where your saints forever sing your praise, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And now I invite the baptismal candidate and his sponsor to come and stand before the bishop. what a wonderful blessing it is to see Owen and David here and to hear what God has done in your lives and in your life, uh, Owen. And we are here because the Holy Spirit has uh, worked in your heart and your mind and brought you to this place because of Jesus and his death and resurrection, which is why we're here tonight too. So we're celebrating God's work in your life and his love for you. Now, David, I'm going to ask you a question. The candidate for holy baptism will now be presented. I present Owen Daniel Ofsted to receive the sacrament of baptism. Owen, have you already been baptized? No. Do you desire to be baptized? I do. Do you renounce the devil and all the spiritual forces of wickedness that rebel against God? I renounce them. Do you renounce the empty promises and deadly deceits of the world that corrupt and destroy the creatures of God? I renounce them. Do you renounce the sinful desires of the flesh that draw you from the love of God? I renounce them. Almighty God, deliver you from the power of darkness and from evil, and lead you into the light and obedience of the kingdom of the Son of His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Oh, and do you turn to Jesus Christ and confess him as your Lord and your Savior? 
I do. Do you joyfully receive the Christian faith as revealed in the Holy Scriptures of the Old and the New Testaments? I do. Will you obediently keep God's holy will and commandments and walk in them all the days of your life? I will, the Lord being my helper. And now I ask all of you, the congregation gathered here today in God's sight, let us, um, will you witness these vows to do all in your power to support Owen in his life in Christ? We, we will. will! That's very enthusiastic. <laughs> it's very good to hear. So let us now join with this candidate to proclaim our faith in the words of the ancient baptismal confession, the Apostles' Creed. And I ask you to stand as we confess this faith. <laughs> Do you believe and trust in God the Father? I do. I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe and trust in Jesus Christ? I do. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit? I do. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting Father, in your great mercy you saved Noah and his family in the ark from the destruction of the flood, prefiguring the sacrament of holy baptism. Look mercifully upon this your servant, Owen. Wash and sanctify him through your Holy Spirit, that he may be delivered from destruction and received into the ark of Christ's church. And being steadfast in faith, joyful through hope, and rooted in love, he may pass through the turbulent floods of this troublesome world and come into the land of everlasting life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. So now we're going to have a procession to the font. And so we'll ask Fuji to lead off with the cross, and then Owen, you can follow him to the back. And then the, uh, with uh, the sponsor... David. And then the clergy will follow, and then I'll invite the choir and all the people to come, and we'll just gather around the font for the baptism. Okay?
Jesus received the baptism of John in the River Jordan, and the Holy Spirit descended upon him as a dove. We thank you, Father, for the water of baptism. In it we are buried with Christ in his death. By it we share in his resurrection. Through it we are made regenerate by your Holy Spirit. Therefore, in joyful obedience to your Son, we bring into his fellowship those who come to him in faith, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Now, Father, sanctify this water by the power of your Holy Spirit. May all who are baptized here be cleansed from sin, be born again, and continue forever faithful in the risen life of Jesus Christ, our Savior. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Now, David, I ask you to name this candidate. Owen Daniel Bostad. Okay, and uh, Owen, I'm going to baptize you in a moment. Um, I think I'll ask you a quick question, if that's sure. okay. Sure. How did you come to have faith in Jesus Christ? How did that happen? We were reading the Bible. Started reading the Bible every day for almost five years. It wasn't until I heard a, a sermon preached in person that I uh, converted, and uh, eventually ended up here. How did you end up at this church? Just through looking online. Really? Yeah. <laughs> the importance of a website. <laughs> well, this is God's gracious work on you. He does work to give faith. It says faith comes by hearing the word of God, and that's what happened with you. And we are very thankful. And I want to just have you lean over the water here, and I'm going to baptize you into Jesus Christ in the name of the Trinity. Oh, and I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Owen, I sign you with the sign of the cross. Owen, receive the sign of the cross as a token of your new life in Christ, in which you shall now not be ashamed to confess the faith of Christ crucified, to fight bravely under the banner against his banner against the world, the flesh, and the devil, and to continue his faithful soldier and servant to the end of your life, the end of your days. Amen. 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 Timothy's 
style. <laughs> Uh, receive this white garment as a token of the righteousness given to you by God's grace in the sacrament of baptism, and as a sign that you should always give yourself to holy living for the glory of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Oh, and Daniel, receive the light of our Lord Jesus Christ, who said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. And let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that by water and the Holy Spirit, you have bestowed upon this your servant, Owen, the forgiveness of sins. Receive him as your own child by adoption. Make him a member of your holy church and raised him to the new life of grace. Sustain him, O Lord, in your Holy Spirit, that he may enjoy everlasting salvation through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us welcome the newly baptized. <laughs> It is very hard to clap with a candle <laughs> and a piece of paper. So we'll, we'll say these uh, words that we receive you into the fellowship of the church, confess the faith of Christ crucified, proclaim his resurrection, and share with us in the royal priesthood of all his people. We're now going to make our way back to the altar for the confirmation. The Fuji will lead us up, and we'll make our way back. Okay, so we have a bonus tonight. Not only is Owen going to be, having been baptized, he's going to be confirmed as well. Uh, there was a bishop in the church named St. Ambrose who was baptized, and he was ordained a deacon, a priest, uh, and a bishop, all on the same day. <laughs> so there's some precedent for this. <laughs> and this is really confirming uh, the promises that were made in baptism. Uh, and this is a time when we ask God, the Holy Spirit, to really strengthen Owen for a life of serving the Lord Jesus with joy and in his power and strength. Let us now pray for this candidate who has made an adult profession of faith and who seeks the laying on of hands. Almighty and everlasting God, we beseech you to strengthen this your servant, Owen, for the witness and ministry through the power of your Holy Spirit. Daily increase in him your manifold virtues of grace, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and true godliness, and the spirit of holy fear, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Bend, O Lord, this your servant, 
Owen Daniel, with your heavenly grace, that he may continue yours forever and daily increase in your Holy Spirit more and more until he comes into the fullness of your everlasting kingdom. Amen. Amen. And let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, let your fatherly hand ever be upon this your servant, Owen Daniel. Let your Holy Spirit ever be with him, and so lead him in the knowledge and obedience of your holy word, that he may faithfully serve you in this life, and joyfully dwell with you in the life to come, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Just wait for everyone to get settled back in their spots, and then we'll say the Easter acclamation together. This is it, folks. I invite you to stand. <laughs> and I don't need to encourage you to be as robust as possible. <laughs> Alleluia! Christ is risen! The Lord is risen indeed! Alleluia! candles as we sing the Gloria. Oh God, you make this most holy night 
light to shine with the glory of the Lord's resurrection. Stir up in your church that spirit of adoption which is given to us in baptism, that we, being renewed both in body and mind, may worship you in sincerity and truth. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the epistle. And if someone could turn the, the lights on, that would be great. More of the lights on. <laughs> A reading from the Epistle of St. Paul to the Romans, starting with chapter 6, verse 3. Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death, in order that, just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him in order that the body of sin might be brought to nothing, so that we would no longer be enslaved to sin. For one who has died has been set free from sin. Now, if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. For the death he died, he died to sin, once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you must also consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. gradual is Psalm 114. I invite you to sing the Alleluia part with me. It goes like this. Oh, please stand. <laughs> Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. house of Jacob from among a people of a foreign tongue. Judah was God's sanctuary, and Israel his dominion. The sea beheld it and fled. Jordan was driven back. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Together. Alleluia. like rams and the little hills like young sheep what ailed you O sea that you fled O Jordan that you were driven back you mountains that you skip like rams and you little hills like young sheep Alleluia 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 Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Tremble, O earth, at the presence of the Lord, at the presence of the God of Jacob. 
who turned the hard rock into a pool of water and the flint stone into a springing well. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Matthew. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Christ. Now after the Sabbath, toward the dawn of the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothing white as snow. And for fear of him, the guards trembled and became like dead men. But the angel said to the woman, Do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here, for he has risen, as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples that he has risen from the dead, and behold, he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him. See, I have told you. So they departed quickly from the tomb with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. And behold, Jesus met them and said, Greetings. And they came up and took hold of his feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. And there... They will see me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. As we stand, let's pray together. Father, we thank you for your word that brings salvation and faith to us through our Lord Jesus Christ. We pray that by your Holy Spirit you open your word to us this night so that we might be strengthened to be lights in this world to the glory of Jesus. In his name we pray. Amen. 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 Please be seated. Well, it's great to be with you tonight. And this is my uh, first uh, Holy Saturday vigil for quite a few years, I must say. Uh, we didn't do a lot of those at St. John's uh, Vancouver. We did one about 30, no, 20 years ago. <laughs> 20 years ago, and we had baptism. Uh, what a wonderful gift it was to see Owen baptized and uh, to see him confirmed as well. Uh, this is the powerful work of the Lord Jesus, and it's because of Easter, Jesus dying and rising again, that uh, this happens and that people's lives are transformed and brought into peace with God forever. And uh, I'm glad for this service because it is such a wonderful expression of the gospel. What we have in this service is both Jesus' burial being affirmed and, and uh, really celebrated in this service and his glorious bright salvation in a very dark world. That's why the symbolism of this service is so important for us. His bright salvation actually invades our dark world. Uh, you know, Paul, at the beginning of Romans, and I want to speak on that Romans passage for a few minutes, but at the beginning of the epistle of Romans, he says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. He said, it is the power of God for salvation. And this is what the gospel is. It is the good news. And tonight we should be very clear about what the good news is. It is all about a person. So Paul very early on in 1 Corinthians 15, told us exactly what the gospel is. There's four points to the gospel. It is that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures. Second, he was buried. Third, he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures. And fourth, he appeared to Peter and then to the twelve and then he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, is what Paul said. That's a lot of witnesses, and it is the gospel. 
Jesus died, he was buried, he rose, and he appeared as the risen Lord Jesus. So on this Holy Saturday, we're faced with a really important question, and that is, what difference to your life does the resurrection of Jesus make? What difference would it make to you if Jesus were not alive? And this is, uh, this is a question that actually has two levels to it. What if Jesus were not alive? There's a historic and objective one. Because if the tomb was not, was, uh, not empty, then Christianity is really futile. We're as dead as our founder. Uh, Jesus is not the Son of God, as he claimed. It's a hollow claim. There would be no forgiveness of sins. We would be lost in our sins. There would be no everlasting life. Death would have the last word. There would be no heaven. There would be no hope that's before us if there's no heaven. And then finally, there'd be no way out of our sin and guilt, our separation from God. Now that historic and objective aspect is central. It's very important. It's our, our, the bedrock of our faith. There's more evidence and eyewitnesses than many accepted events in history about this resurrection. John, Jesus' best friend, said about the gospel, which is Jesus, I love the way he put it, he said, that which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon and touched with our hands, concerning the word of life, that life was made manifest, and we have seen it. It's not a philo philosophical concept, it's something tangible. So gospel is not a teaching, it is the news about the person, Jesus Christ, who has been crucified, buried, risen, and seen by many. But I want to say tonight, too, that there is a personal and very subjective aspect to Jesus rising for us. Um, it is, if Jesus did not rise from the dead, uh, many things that are personal to us would not be true. Uh, it is because he has risen from the dead that we know him personally. Do you remember on the stories of how uh, Jesus rose from the dead, the first person who saw him was Mary. And she didn't recognize him until he said her name, Mary. And suddenly <coughs> her eyes were open and she realized this is the risen Lord Jesus. So we know him personally. We enter into a real friendship with God. And not only that, but he has a dynamic, a real influence in our life day to day now. You know, Paul at Philippians says, I want to know Jesus and the power of his resurrection. Now, he's saying, it's his urgent agenda here on earth. He's saying, what does it mean that Jesus was raised, but that we have been raised with Jesus as well? And that's what our Bible reading today is about. Um, with the wonderful historical fact of the resurrection, there's this equally wonderful effect on you and I in our everyday life that Jesus has risen from the dead. So just in a very few minutes, I want to look at Romans 6. And um, uh, I'll read it for you because I don't know what... By the way, I think we should have a little prize or a special medal for the people who read tonight as well. Uh, it was very difficult to do. Uh, no light. <laughs> And uh, it looked as though it was possible for the words to go up in flame, too. <laughs> the Bible does say the Lord, that the, the word of God is a flame. So. But here's it says, Romans 6, 4. Listen to these words, uh, verses 4 and 5, are so important. It was probably part of the catechism. And uh, I know, Owen, you went through uh, catechism as well. But here, listen to these words. This is what Christians believed from the very beginning. We were buried, therefore, with Jesus by baptism into death, in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. So just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. For if we've been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like him. And this is the great theme of our passage, that we are united with Jesus Christ in his grace. We're, re we're united with Jesus in a death like his, and we're united with Jesus in a resurrection like his. That's what this reading is about. It's saying that when we repent and believe the good news, we're connected 
through all the benefits that Jesus Christ has in a personal and an experiential way, and that leads to a new life. And to be very simple, there are two aspects to our reading tonight. It says two things. It says that in order for there to be a resurrection, a death must occur. And then it says in order for there to be a new life, a resurrection must occur. So I want to talk about that first one, the death. Uh, and I'm going to go through the passage backwards because it helps us a little bit, actually. Um, Jesus says, in verse 10, it says that the death that Jesus died, he died to sin once and for all. Um, and then he goes from that to verse 8 to saying, we died with Christ. So Christ, who has died in this way, once and for all, is the one that we die with in verse 8. And then in verse 2, it says, we died to sin. We died to sin. And what that's saying is, and this goes back to the previous chapter 5, that just as sin ruled in this world, so grace rules through righteousness. It's saying that for every person, sin had like a tyranny over us. And that's demonstrated in death that everybody faces. But through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, sin's price is paid and its power is broken. So, so sin and death no longer have mastery. In verse 5, it says Jesus has freed us from the reign of sin and death. He is ruler. So if you're united to Jesus Christ, this is true of you as well. Just as he is free from sin and death, you also, if you have faith in Jesus, are free from sin and death. And it doesn't mean that we are sinless. I hate to tell this to you, Owen, have you just been baptized? Um, being freed from sin, which the gospel does for us, does not mean that we stop sinning. But what it does mean is that we can sin less. We are freed from the reign of sin over us. That power of sin has been nullified by Jesus. And there is a transfer. We are transferred to a new kingdom where it's actually Jesus who is the king, who is ruler, and that we can turn to him. And I'm going to talk about that in a moment. But it means that every aspect of our life that was under the rule of sin, every little aspect now is under the rule of Jesus Christ. And there is a struggle against sin. Now, I want, to listen, I want you to listen to these words that we read in the baptism. Uh, we read it today for, uh, for Owen's prayer. Almighty God, deliver you from the powers of darkness and evil and lead you into the light and obedience of the kingdom of Jesus Christ, our Lord. So you see, every aspect of your life, of your sinful life, is flooded by Jesus' rule. That was, that was the prayer for Owen. It's the prayer for all of us as well. Um, and so... That's the first part. In order for there to be a resurrection, there has to be a death that occurs. You are dead to sin. But here, secondly, there is a new life that, that, uh, that happens. And the only way that happens is through a resurrection. Looking back at uh, verses 4 and 5 again, you notice there that there are two halves in each verse. Uh, we were buried into Jesus' death. And we are raised from the dead by the glory of Jesus. We walk in newness of life. And this happens because the power of the resurrection is at work in us. Uh, the power of Jesus' resurrection actually comes into our life right now. That is necessary in order for a new life, to walk in newness of life, to happen. There has to be a resurrection in us just like Jesus was raised from the dead. And that resurrection that takes place in us is the power of Jesus himself giving us grace in our struggle against sin, in our struggle against all the things that draw us away from the Lord Jesus, all the things that Owen renounced in the baptism to today. So the purpose of our burial with Christ is that we might be resurrected and then that we might walk in newness of life and all that means is that our life will reflect the values of the new age the resurrection age the age of the kingdom of god we will be resurrected one day 
And I want to um, uh, just say a word about the resurrection. Because when you heard that read, just as Christ was raised, we will be raised. It doesn't just mean the resurrection of the body one day, which all of us will receive who have faith in Jesus, a glorious hope that we have. But there's more to it now. It says that the way we deal with sin here and now is that the power of that resurrection comes into our life now. It begins. Uh, we don't stay in the grave. We rise by Jesus' grace. If we have died, we will live. And the future tense has a present implications. We have been brought from death into life. We now experience the first fruits of heaven, of what we will receive one day in the resurrection of the body. That power is at work in us right now. The death Jesus de died, he died to sin, but the life he lives, he lives to God. And because he lives, we are alive to God. And for that reason, we look away from ourselves. We actually look to Jesus, the risen Lord, who is our rescuer. We turn daily to him. And the resurrection ability and strength of the risen Lord Jesus trans translates us more and more into his likeness because we have been crucified, died, and risen. Well, I think I need to uh, end this. I think I'm going to end this with, um, with Paul's life because Paul's not talking about some abstract thing that he hopes happens. This happened to him as well. The risen Lord Jesus appeared to him on the road to Damascus. And at that moment, Paul died to his old life, this life that's dominated by sin and death. And he, re he received instruction about who the Lord Jesus was and is. And he was baptized and he was raised from his blindness and he lived a new life in the Lord Jesus. And we read about that in the Bible. That's what Owen was reading about when he came to faith. Letters written by Paul, who was walking in newness of life. And so for us, this means three brief things. It means if we have died with Christ and rise to him, with him, we have been set free from sin to fight against sin. That's, that's the... That's the um, demonstration that the power of the Lord Jesus is working in us, that we've been freed from sin, is that we struggle with it. You know, in the baptism service today, we said, Owen Daniel, receive the sign of the cross as a token of your new life in Christ, in which you shall not be ashamed to confess the faith of Christ crucified, to fight bravely against his, under his banner against the world, the flesh, and the devil and to continue as his faithful soldier and servant to the end of your days. There is a story of struggle, and is a story of serving, and is all done in the power of the resurrection. The Holy Spirit shows us where we have gone wrong and directs us into the ways of the Lord Jesus. And secondly, not only is there a struggle, but it, it, <coughs> our life says that death no longer has dominion. And uh, what this means is, even though your body dies, your spirit is alive. That the Lord Jesus lives in you, that he gives life to your mortal body. Death has no dominion over you. And at the end of chapter 8, we hear that nothing will ever separate you from your Heavenly Father. If we are forgiven, we will never be forsaken. That's why the New Testament never talks about Christians dying. They always talks about people falling asleep. We may fear the process of death as Christians, but we do not fear death itself, because if we die in Christ, we pass through death into the immediate presence of God. We begin to experience that right now. So there is a struggle. Death doesn't have dominion. And finally, we are alive to God in Jesus Christ. So in verse four again, it said, as Christ is raised, you too might walk in newness of life means you've been transferred as i said before into a new environment we are like refugees that are brought into a new rule and a new realm in god's realm grace rules so that you are alive in him there's fruit of his character that actually grows in you that's what the fruit of the holy spirit is that's what you look for in this being alive to god the life of god has been implanted into your souls. It's God who works in you. 
Philippians 2 says. So the events of this night at Easter have everything to do with our life now. Dying and rising with Jesus means bringing, uh, Jesus brings us into his experience of great blessings. So build your life on God's word, as Owen has been doing, not on your feelings. He will not remove that life, that resurrection life from you. Jesus is the head of a new humanity, you and I. We're joined to him by faith and in relationship to him forever. And that personal relationship will grow throughout this life and in the life to come forever. That's why we say with such joy proclaiming the Easter faith, Alleluia, Christ, Christ is risen. Is risen. The is Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. I invite you to stand as we continue with the prayers of the people. On the holy night, when Jesus Christ rose from the dead and restored our life of grace, we turn to God our Father in prayer, asking for all our needs, responding with, hear our prayer. For all who believe in the resurrection, that throughout sharing in the life of the risen Lord, the Easter may mark the, for us a new beginning in our life of faith. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For peace in our world, that the peace promised by the Lord will become a reality for all people throughout the world, wherever they may be. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For all those baptized or received into full communion with the Christ tonight, that they may continue to grow in faith and love of God's of God. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. prayer. That the people of every nation may come to share the joy of this night, and that the good news of the death and resurrection of Christ may gladden the hearts of all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, hear our prayer. prayer. For all whose lifelong vigil for the Lord has ended and who are now in sleep, in death, that they may live forever in Christ, who has destroyed the power of death and opened the gates of heaven to all. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. God, our Father, as we celebrate the resurrection of Christ your Son, we ask you to strengthen us in faith that we may proclaim the pardon and peace you have given us. We make this prayer through Jesus Christ, who is our Lord and mediator forever and ever. Amen. Amen. After a period of silence, let us humbly confess our sins to Almighty God. Join me in praying, most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. <coughs> Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who in his great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins to all those who sincerely repent and with true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> now hear the word of God to all who truly turn to him. Come to me all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, 
that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. The saying is trustworthy and deserving of full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. If anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. He is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. I invite you to stand. <laughs> The peace of the Lord be always with you. And with your spirit. Let us offer one another a sign of Easter peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Yours, O Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty. For everything in heaven and on earth is yours. Yours is the kingdom, O Lord, and you are exalted as head above all. All things come from you, O Lord. And and all your own and the Lord be with you. And with thy spirit, lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks. 
thanks unto our Lord God. It is meet and right so to do. It is very meet, right, in our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, everlasting God, creator and preserver of all things. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who was offered for us and has taken away the sin of the world, who by his death has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again has won for us everlasting life. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and singing. sinned against you and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent your only Son, Jesus Christ, into the world for our salvation. By the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, he became flesh and dwelt among us. In obedience to your will, he stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself once for all, that by his suffering and death we might be saved. By his resurrection, he broke the bonds of death, trampling hell and Satan under his feet. As our great high priest, he ascended to your right hand in glory, that we might come with confidence before the throne of grace. On the night that he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, Jesus took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Therefore we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, and we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your word and Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Sanctify us also that we may worthily receive this holy sacrament and be made one body with him, that he may dwell in us and we in him. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us with all your saints into the joy of your heavenly kingdom, where we shall see our Lord face to face. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father now and forever. Amen. 
And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia! Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us eat the feast. Alleluia! We do not presume to come to this short table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your abundant and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord, whose character is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. <laughs> visitor here with us, and you have been baptized, and you <coughs> believe and trust in Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, uh, then you are welcome to come and receive communion here. If you're not yet baptized, or you're not quite sure, or you don't yet believe in Jesus, uh, you have two options. Uh, you are very welcome to come forward and receive a blessing. And for a blessing, you simply just cross your arms over your chest, and I will bless you. Um, or uh, you can remain in your seat, whatever you're more, most comfortable with. What we'll do tonight is uh, I'll just uh, administer to the clergy, and then I'll invite Owen and David to come up. So, Owen, you can receive your first communion. And then we'll go, as usual, with the choir and uh, with everyone else. Okay.
the 12, eh? No? No? And also, we didn't set the church on fire, which I'm yes. very grateful for, and I'm sure the way is very grateful for. <laughs> um, not too many announcements tonight. Um, one announcement is, uh, in celebration of Owen's baptism, and in celebration that our Lenten fast has ended, uh, we're going to have a, a few refreshments. Some people have brought some snacks, and some wine, and some see some whiskey over there and uh, so please uh, stay if you're able and join us for a our, the first feast of Easter and there's one other announcement I think Peter is there he is um, Patricia's not going to be here tomorrow so I need to make this announcement tonight um, very sadly tomorrow is Patricia's last day as church administrator at St. Timothy's which is a grievous thing for me. Um, it's a grievous thing for our church. And I'm happy for you, Patricia. I know you're going on, you know, you're going on tour. You're getting out of town. But we're left here. Uh, I am so, so personally grateful to you. I know the church is grateful, but I am personally so very grateful to you for the work that you've done. And I can honestly say that I never could have taken over as rector and done done this job without your help. And you know, so I'm I'm very very grateful. So please come on up and let's thank Patricia.
like, I'm not going. A few people have said, oh, you're, you're leaving or something. I'm not, I'm not leaving the church. <laughs> I'm leaving the role. Uh, and I, I just wanted to reflect. I just wanted to reflect listening to the bishop's sermon. And I know that Christ is alive here because, you know, when I would get frustrated or make mistakes or get angry or cross or whatever, I was almost always greeted by Christ because I could see it in patience and love and kindness and just all those attributes of Christ that live in all of us. And um, it, it's been a wonderful job for quite a number of years now. I'm in many ways kind of sad to see it go, but uh, somebody else will come along and do a great job. So thank you very much for the flowers and the good wishes. Thank you. Yeah. Get tomorrow on Easter Day, but thank you also to the Altar Guild for decking the church and making it so joyful um, for the, for this service. And all all through Holy Week, the Altar Guild has been working on overdrive. So thank you, Altar Guild. Thank you, Choir, for all of your work this week. Uh, thank you, Gabriel. Thank you, Daniel, for joining us tonight. We're always we always love it when you're here with us. Uh, anyone else I'm missing? Thank you, Bishop Dan, for joining us. Uh, very special to have you, and thank you for preaching the gospel to us. Um, thank you, Chaplain. <laughs> <laughs> we love you too. Uh, and you know, we, I, I will say that we survived the uh, Easter Vigil and the St. John's clergy survived the High Church Eucharist. <laughs> You're to be commended. <laughs> well, I'm not St. John's clergy anymore. Ah! Burn! <laughs> zing, zing. That's true, that's true. Well, uh, let's stand for the blessing. And now may the God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, that great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work, doing his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. 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 Are sending him.
Holy Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Thank you. 